Hello and welcome to day two of 30 days of Photoshop. Today we're going to show you how to open, edit, and save your documents in Photoshop. So we're starting off with opening our documents. Now you can open any type of image file in Photoshop. So here in our splash screen, we're going to see right on the top left, an open dialogue. You can simply click and drag your image files directly into Photoshop if you'd like. But by clicking here on open, it's going to open up your finder or explorer. Now we're going to go ahead and find our document for today. This is actually included in your download. It's totally free. You just click on the link right down below so you can follow along with today's video. So we're going to go right here where it says open, save, edit. This is our JPEG for today. And we're going to go ahead and click on open. And here we are in Photoshop. So as you can see, very, very easy to open things in Photoshop. Now, there are a couple of other ways. And I want to kind of draw your attention to those ways as well. You can hit Control or Command O at any point in time to open a document. Or you can go up here to File and then to Open. You can also go to Open Recent if you have some recent documents that you've used as well. Okay, now I also mentioned you can click and drag images directly into Photoshop and there's two ways to do that. So right now I already have a document open. You can see this is open, save, edit, dot JPEG. This is a Photoshop, well, it's a document that's open in Photoshop. Now, if I wanna click and drag, let's go ahead and bring up my finder. I can go ahead and take an image and I can click and drag this right into Photoshop. Now, if I click and drag this into an existing document, just like I've done, we're gonna see the plus icon, and then you can see I can go ahead and make that a little bit smaller, hit that checkbox. And basically, I can take any document and drag it right into an existing document in Photoshop. Now, let's go ahead and delete that and say we wanna bring it into a new document. All we have to do, we're gonna take this other image, we're gonna take that, and instead of dragging it into the document, I'm gonna bring it right up here to our tabs, there we go, and it's going to open it up as a new document, and you can see here in a new tab. I can click through my different tabs at any point in time, right up here on the top. I can also go to Window, and then here I can see all of the available tabs that I have in Photoshop. Now, let's say I go ahead and close these out. I'm going to hit Control or Command W to close both of these documents out. We don't need to save it. Well, here back on my home screen, I'm gonna see my recent documents and anything that I've done recently is gonna be available for me right here. So if I wanna open it again, all I have to do is click right there and we're back into Photoshop. So you can see there are a ton of ways to open up documents in Photoshop. Clicking, dragging is a great way to do it, but it's also always going to be in your recent file list. So now we know there's a lot of ways you can open documents in Photoshop. Next, we're moving on to editing. And for this, I want to add some light rays to this photograph. It's going to be absolutely stunning. So for the editing process, we're going to be making a couple of different layers. And then when it comes time to save that, we're going to save this in two different formats. One with our layers intact, and then another that's compressed that's going to be used for sharing. All right, let's go ahead and show you how to edit. So for this image, the first thing I want to do is add a gradient to kind of enhance that sun effect. So we're gonna start with our gradient tool. Let's go ahead over here in our toolbar on the left-hand side. We're gonna click on our gradient tool, or you can simply hit G. Now up at the top, we're gonna to choose our gradient. That's going to allow us to edit this gradient at any time. And here we have our gradient editor. So let's go ahead and click on the drop-down box. Now there are a lot of gradients. I'm gonna click and make this just a little bit bigger here. There are so many different gradients that I can choose from at any point in time. But right here on the very top, if you open up your basics tab, these are your basic gradients. So this is gonna be your foreground to background gradient, the very first one. Now, the foreground color, as you can see, is this yellow color here. So it's gonna come from this yellow color to this white color. So that's our foreground to background gradient. Next, we have foreground to transparent. So it's gonna be our foreground color to basically invisible. And next, we have a black to white. So I wanna choose my foreground color to transparent because I wanna basically create the sunlight too transparent or too invisible. Fantastic. Now let's go ahead and choose our foreground color here just to show you, because right now I already had this selected as my sky color, but let's say you had this like as a dark green color, hit okay there. Now you can see my foreground color is dark green and that's also represented in this gradient. So as long as you have this foreground to transparent gradient selected, then any color you decide to choose for your foreground color will be represented in this gradient. Okay. Now we have a few different types of gradients we can choose from. We could choose a linear gradient, which basically is like a wipe from one color to another or to transparent. We're gonna choose a radial gradient because I wanna kind of have a sunburst from the sky, from the sun. So let's go ahead and click on our radial gradient. 
Now with our radial gradient, what we're gonna do is first change our foreground color because I don't really need it to be this green. I kind of just did this to show you how this color and this color will always match. But let's choose a color from our sky. So let's go ahead and click here on our foreground color. There we go. Now you can use this color picker if you want and try to identify the colors, or you can simply move your cursor right over here to the sky and you're gonna see it's an eyedropper icon. There we go. I'm gonna click there and it's gonna choose that, choose that color for me and hit okay. And there we go. We've got the sky color here and it's gonna be sky to transparent. Perfect, so we're ready for our gradient. So to apply the gradient, all we have to do is simply click and drag wherever we'd like our gradient to apply. And I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna use two fingers on my trackpad to just zoom out a little bit so we can see how this looks. Now here on this point, I can click and drag to move my gradient at any point in time. I wanna kind of have it coming from the sun. And I can click on this point here to make this gradient either larger or smaller. Now, right now it's just simply this color. We're gonna change our blend mode right over here from our gradient layer. You can see I can turn this gradient off and on any time like this. We're gonna change this from normal down here to screen, which is gonna kind of create a light effect, making it actually look like it's light coming from the sun, okay? And then I could simply lower my opacity if I want it to be a little bit less bright and I can change the size and scale of this gradient at any time. Also keep in mind at any point, I can change the colors of my gradient. So if I simply click on this point here, next in my contextual taskbar, I have my gradient color. So I could click there and I could choose all kinds of different colors at any point in time. So I'm not stuck with my original color. You can see as I go through all my different colors here, I have a lot of different options. I can use and use my eyedropper to choose all kinds of different colors from the sky. If I want it more saturated, I can do that. There we go, that looks really nice. So we have a nice big sun flare coming from the sky and I can make this larger or smaller. Let's go ahead and zoom out there so you can see I can make my gradient as large or as small as I want. I think that's looking really, really nice. And as of course you can see here in my layers panel, I can turn this off or on at any point in time. All right, so that's our first step of editing. As you can see, I have a couple different layers now. I have my background layer and I have my gradient fill layer. So when it comes time to saving this document, I wanna make sure I have both of those layers intact. So let's go ahead and do our first save and then we're gonna add some light rays. Okay, so to save this document, all I have to do is go here to file and we're gonna go down to where it says save as. Perfect, file and then save as. And I'm just gonna put this in my sample images folder you're gonna see by default, the format is going to be on Photoshop. That's exactly what we want. And as you can see in my file formats, it's gonna be a PSD, Photoshop document. All right, let's go in and hit save and we're good to go. And then here on the very top, you can see it changed from a JPEG to a PSD. So now this is a layered file. I can close this out, I can open it back up and I'm gonna have my layers intact. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna close this out right over here on the top left. There we go. And then I'm back in my home screen and here I have open save edit.psd. I can click on this at any point in time and you can see my layers are intact. I can change these or edit them at any time. So that's our first step is go ahead and make some changes and then save this out as a PSD. You don't have to wait till you're done. You can save this early and then continue to save as time goes by. All right, now let's go ahead and create some light rays. So for our light rays, what we're gonna do is use the brush tool to create a lot of different spots. And then I'm gonna use a blur to kind of make it look like they're actual light rays. And then we're gonna transform it. It's gonna look really cool. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm here in my layers panel. We're gonna go down and create a new layer. Next, let's hit B for the brush tool. And I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and sample a color right here from the sky. That looks pretty good. Now with our brush tool, we can right click and we can choose the size of our brush and the hardness. Let's go ahead and bring the hardness up. Yeah, about 80, 90% looks pretty good. And our size that we can choose here, but you can also use the open and close brackets on your keyboard. Okay, so let's hit enter. Now I'm gonna create a dot right here. As you can see, I'm gonna use my open and close brackets. Let's use a close bracket. We can make some larger dots just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the open bracket and we're gonna create some smaller dots as well. There we go, that looks pretty good. And basically I'm just kind of creating a bunch of little dots around my image, and this is gonna simulate light rays. All right, fantastic. So we're off to a pretty good start. Keep in mind, you'll be able to download this PSD if you wanna use these light rays on any of your photos. So now that I've created a bunch of little dots, like literally you can see all that is is a bunch of little dots, we're going to apply a filter. So let's go up here to filter. We're gonna to go to blur, and we're gonna go down to where it says radial Blur, there we go. 
Now with our radial blur, we have two options. We have a spin blur, and here you can see, I can choose my spin center, and you can see like literally it's going to spin everything around. Or we have a zoom blur, where it's going to kind of create this zoom effect, and I'm gonna bring this to the very top right, and you can see it kind of looks like light rays. And you can choose your amount of blur you'd like. We're gonna go all the way to the very top, 100, and hit okay. There we go. And when I do that, you can see instantly we have a light ray effect. How beautiful is that? Let's just go ahead and zoom in. Now, I'm gonna hit undo, okay, a couple times, control or command Z, okay? Or you can go back in your history if you want. You can see you have your full history here. But basically what it did is it took all these little dots and with this radial blur, it stretched them out and it made them look like they're actually blurred in that direction. So you can see the dots here and I go back in my history back and forth, and we can see this is what they look like. How amazing is that? Now, if I want this effect to be a little stronger, all I have to do is go to this layer and hit Control or Command J, or simply right click and go to Duplicate Layer. There we go, let's hit OK. And by duplicating that layer, literally I just doubled the amount of pixels on that layer, and look at that, it's a stronger effect. How nice is this sun ray effect? It looks really good in my opinion. Now, with that duplicated, we're gonna take both of these layers and I'm gonna merge them together. So I just want this to be one layer. I duplicated it to make the effect a little bit stronger. So to merge them together, you can hit Control or Command E, or you can simply go to Layer, and then down here to Merge Layers. There we go. Now, once I've merged those layers together, I'm gonna to change my blend mode from Normal to Screen, just like we did on this uh, Gradient Fill layer. And then I can go ahead and transform this. So I can hit Control or Command T for Transform. I can bring my center point up here to the top right where the sun is. By the way, if you don't see your little center point, just make sure you go ahead and check that box right over there and you'll be able to see your center point. Okay, now I can rotate this around my center point if I want to. I can even hold Control or Command and click on any one of these corners and change the shape of this light ray at any time. So you can see I can make it lar longer, I can make it shorter, I can change where it's actually coming from. Hold Control or Command, and you're gonna have a lot of power with the sun rays in your image. You can create it like literally however, how you want, and do this at any point in time. Let's hit Enter there. I think this looks really, really nice. Look at that. We're just gonna lower the opacity, and we are good to go. But doesn't that like light rays look really, really cool? It looks like it's actually coming through the trees, which I really like. Okay, now again, we can turn both of these layers off and turn them on at any point in time. Here what we're gonna do is hit Control or Command S for save, because we already saved this set as a PSD. You can also simply go to File, and then down here to Save. There you go, you can see it's saving, and it's just saved. So now, if I wanted to close this again, boop, I just did, and here, if I wanna open it again, of course I can go right here in my Recents, but it's also here in Finder as well. You can see Open Save Edit.psd with the light rays, I can click and drag this in here as well. So that's always the, like workflow that we wanna do. We wanna go ahead and open our document, go ahead and save it, give it a name, and then when you're done with it, save it again, and you're good to go. So we always wanna make sure we have our layered file, that's the PSD. Now, what happens when we're actually ready to share this out on social media, we're ready to print it, we're ready to use it as a compressed file? This is when we want to export it. So saving is for your layered files, like a PSD. Exporting is when you wanna convert this to a compressed JPEG. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So to export this as a JPEG, we're gonna go up here to File, and then down to Export, and we're gonna to go to Export As. There we go. Now, when we click on Export As, we have a lot of different options here. Here in the very top right, you can choose your format. A PNG, which will allow you to have some transparency, but it's gonna be a larger file format. You can choose a JPEG, which is gonna be the most common way of sharing your file, or you can choose a GIF or a GIF, which is going to allow you to have some animation. So we're gonna choose our JPEG. Now from here, you can also decide to change your file quality. Right now on the left-hand side, you can see this is the name of my file. It's gonna be a JPEG. This is the resolution, and this is going to be the file size. But if I go ahead and take our quality and I bring that down to five, you can see my file size gets a little bit lower. So my image will have lower quality, but also my file size will be lower. So it helps to have a good balance between quality and file size. And in this case, I think a higher quality makes sense. Let's choose a quality of about six, and that's gonna be eight megabytes. Perfect. Now from here, I could choose to change the resolution of my image or keep it full size. In this case, we're gonna keep it full size. It looks pretty good. 
And then on the bottom, we're gonna have it automatically check these boxes to convert to sRGB. This is gonna make sure it shows just really well on mobile devices and on the internet. Okay, perfect. So everything looks really good here. We're choosing JPEG as our format. So we're ready to export. Let's go ahead down here and click on export. Okay, we're gonna put this in my sample images and then I'm gonna just call this export. Fantastic, hit enter and it's saved. So now let's go ahead and take a look in our finder window. So back here in Finder, here we go, we can see this is our original image here. We have this completely intact, we can get back to it at any time. We have our PSD, and with our PSD, you can see we have our layered files, and we have our export version as well. So I can bring these into Photoshop, and we can take a look at them. Fantastic. So this is our exported file, you can see this is a JPEG. Everything is flattened, and it's all baked back together again. Now, the reason why we always save our layered file again, let's say you see this and you're like, oh cool, I did a really good job, but maybe you scroll to the top and you're like, oh, this light ray kind of looks like it's coming from like the sky, maybe, it, maybe it's not exactly real. So maybe I need to go back into my layered file here, maybe I need to go back into this uh, PSD that I made, maybe I need to alter my uh, layered file, maybe I just need to remove some of this light, fl light flare. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer mask on my light ray layer and then I'm gonna use my brush tool and paint with black at like 20%. And I'm gonna kind of erase it from the sky where I don't think it makes sense, you know? So here's the before. There we go, I'm gonna hold shift and click on this layer mask. There's the before and the after where these light rays were kind of like coming from above the sky, okay? It's a little bit hard to see maybe if I just increase the opacity there. But you can see before they were kind of coming from above the sun, which didn't really make sense. And here in the after, I kind of fixed that. So rather than having to do everything completely from scratch again, I'm able to make those changes here in my PSD. Maybe I want this light ray effect to be a little bit more subtle. There we go. We're starting to look really nice and natural. Okay, here all I have to do is save this again. So we always want to make sure we have this PSD intact so I don't have to start completely over. I can work with these layers. So I save this again. Now we're just going to do a re-export. We're going to go to File, Export, Export As. There we go. Let's just keep all these same settings. You can see, yep, that looks much better. We're gonna click there and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and call this export two. There we go. And now I have a new version of a JPEG where I fixed those issues. So that's why it's really important to always have your layered file as a PSD, which we go to file and save as, and then you do an exported version with a flatten and compress image, and that's what you're gonna be using for sharing. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Tomorrow we're talking about different file formats and showing you the differences between PNGs and JPEGs and GIFs and TIFFs and PSDs, all of it. Thanks so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.